Hello, darkness, my old friend. Sens lose 2 1 in overtime to the Boston Bruins. You only get half a song because it's only half a loss. But they did lose, and they lost to the Bruins again. And they gave up a goal and two assists to the duo of Brad Marchand and David Pasternak. But they played better, and they didn't let them take over the game. Yes, Marchand had a good night, and the same with Pasternak. But the Sens did a good job, thanks in large part to Mike McKenna, of keeping them at bay for the most part. But, as always, let's kick things off with lineup changes. After the Sens got some bad news on Saturday, with the injuries of Bobby Ryan and Matt Duchesne, they got more bad news on Sunday, as both Dylan DeMello and Christian Yarosh were ruled out. With two more defensemen unavailable, the Sens recalled Eric Bergdurfer from the Belleville Sens to fill in. The Sens kept the rest of their skaters the same, and the aforementioned Mike McKenna got the start and goal, as Craig Anderson was given a rare night off on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. And after a less than terrific first period against the Penguins on Saturday, the Sens came out and were much better in the first period on Sunday. Despite a less than solid first period against the Penguins, the Sens were still able to take a 1-0 lead out of that period, and with a better effort on Sunday, they were able to do it again. With just over 7 minutes left in the period, the Sens execute a terrific breakout, race down the ice, and race out to a 1-0 lead. What an incredible breakout. White wins the faceoff back to Harper. He sends it behind the net to Shabbat. Shabbat sends it up the wall to Kachuk. Kachuk sends it back into the middle to Harper. He sends it up the other wall in the neutral zone to White, and White and Stone race in on a 2-1-1. -on -one. White makes a quick shot feed, and then sends a circle-to-circle -circle pass to Stone. Stone one-times it by Rask to complete the excellent play. Man, oh man, what a breakout. I think the thing I enjoyed the most about it was its simplicity. Yes, it was an awesome breakout, but it was kept very simple. It started with a face-off win by White, but from there, it was bing bing bing. When you can make a number of short, quick passes, it frees up a lot of open ice for yourself, and they're a lot easier to complete than the longer ones. That's exactly what the Sens did on this play. Every pass is a short, quick feed to the open man, and when the guy received the pass, he quickly sent it off to the next guy. That was until White had enough room to race in on a two-on-one. But it was an excellent set of passes and something we need to see a lot more of. Yeah, the type of passes that Carlson made to Hoffman in the 2017 playoffs are more attractive, but the shorter, quicker passes maintain possession better and do a better job. The Sens learned that the right way on this play. Also, a special credit to White on the play. First of all, for winning the face-off. The play doesn't even start without his face-off win. And second, for the pass. It was subtle, but very important. I don't know if Stone has the kind of empty net he does without that subtle shot fake from White. Every game, he just seems to get better and better, and seems to gain more and more confidence. And someone else who seemed to gain confidence was Mike McKenna, who made a number of key stops in the first period to keep the Sens in front. The biggest of which, I thought, was a stop on David Pasternak near the end of the first period. Ben Harper committed an awful turnover at the Sens' blue line, and Pasternak intercepted it. He had all kinds of time and space to walk into a shot. McKenna calmly kicked out the left pad and blocker to get the save. That save was huge, as it kept the Sens in front, 1-0, heading to period 2. The Sens did have a late 5-on-3 advantage to end the first period, but couldn't score. I tweeted out after the first period that that was a huge missed opportunity, but I couldn't have foreseen how right I would be. Less than 8 minutes into period 2, the Bruins are on the power play, and they make the Sens pay. David Pasternak's point shot gets blocked, and with McKenna ready for the first shot, is out of position. The puck lands on the stick of Brad Marchand, and he easily one-times it in the empty net to tie the score at 1. <sighs> Just a lucky bounce on the power play. Not everything is going to bounce your way. Managing momentum is now the key for the Sens. Both teams have some chances. Neither find the back of the net as both goalies are up to the task and we head to the third period still tied at one. Early in the third, with the Bruins on the power play, Mike McKenna makes a huge save moving from his left to right to glove down a David Pasternak one-timer. That's a big save. If the Bruins get a goal there, it completely changes the complexion of the third period. With the Sens shorthanded later in the period, Tierney and Stone race in on a 2-on-1. -on Tierney feeds Stone, he rockets the puck into the top of the net, Rask snaps out the glove and stops it. What an incredible save by Rask. 
props to him for that one. I thought for sure Stone had a goal there. The goalies continue to hold the fort from there, and the Sens head to overtime tied at one with the Bruins. In the extra frame, yeah, three on three is generally high energy, but in this one, it took a while for us to get to that point. The Sens took the puck and turned around and kept going back into their zone. I don't know, three, four, five times? Finally, the game opened up. Nordstrom races in on a 2 on one he feeds Corelli who one-times it, but this blurry ball comes out of nowhere to save the day. McKenna shows off his age, reverts back to old school hockey, makes the two pad stop and says, GET THAT GARBAGE OUT OF HERE! Oh. The pad stack is an antiquated save in the NHL. It's a throwback and a bit impressive, just because you don't see it very often anymore. Unfortunately, the Bruins make no mistake less than a minute later. Like a knife through butter, the Bruins slice through the Sens' lead. Marchand feeds Krejci, he wheels behind the net with the puck, and sends a cross-ice feed to Krug, who's left wide open to tap it into the empty net and give the Bruins a 2-1 overtime win. What a nice pass from Krejci. He made that pass from behind the net, and it still somehow found its way onto the stick of Krug. Now, with the puck going across McKenna to Krug, it would have been nice if he had swatted it away, but I'm sure part of the reason he didn't was because he was afraid if he swatted it, it might end up in the back of his net anyway. And of course, if Dezingle had covered Krug, that would have been nice too. But the Sens had just executed a switch on the play, and the delay gave Krug just enough time to put it in the empty net. Disappointing, but not the worst way to lose. Now, let's move on to good news, bad news. Last night's game brought many aspects of good news, including Ottawa's improvement from Game 1 to Game 3 against the Bruins. It has been night and day, but Ottawa still has to go back to Boston, where they haven't been since Game 1. So that will be interesting to see how much an improvement they have actually made. Regardless though, they have improved. Today though, I'm going to go a different route with my good news. Mike McKenna made an NHL career high 42 saves last night and was real solid. And that is good news. I gave McKenna a hard time earlier in the year before a start and I did so again in yesterday's video. Both of those games, he's come out and played extremely well, and in both games, he's given his team a chance to win, and in the first one, they actually did win too. Last night's game was Ottawa's 31st of the season, yet last night was just the 4th time this season that Anderson was given a full night off. He started 26 of 31 games this year, and appeared in 27 of 31. In those games, he's faced a league-high 972 shots, 139 more than the second place John Gibson. He's second in the NHL in minutes played, behind only Marc-Andre Fleury, whose Vegas Golden Knights have played an extra game. All this while being 37 years old. It's just not sustainable over the course of a full NHL season. I know the Sens are doing things to manage his energy levels, like giving him practices off, but it's still not sustainable. Getting Andy more time off will not only be better for the team, but it will be better for the player. Everyone benefits if he plays less. And having McKenna play well is huge. The timing couldn't have been more perfect either. December is a busy month for the Sens, so having a goalie who can spell off Andy is huge. And having a goalie who's playing up to the standards of a backup goalie right now is important for the players as it gives them a little extra mental edge. When looking at the Sens schedule for the month of December, their Pittsburgh-Boston back-to-back was their first of four this month. After the Penguins-Bruins double, the Sens play Friday-Saturday combination three weeks in a row, and the first one is travel in, travel out with sleep in a hotel, while at least the second and the third are travel in, travel out, but they get to sleep in their own bed. With four back-to-backs in a little under a month, the Sens are going to need McKenna now more than ever. McKenna was good last night, and has been solid in his last couple starts, and that is good news. Now, for the bad news. I'm not feeling too negative today. So the bad news, it's not coming too easily. There was a lot to like, and a lot to hate. I didn't like Ottawa's giveaway numbers again. They had 21 and were a minus 12, but we talked about that yesterday. Ottawa's power play was not good enough, and that is bad news. In the first period, the Sens gave away an incredible opportunity to go up 2-0, but couldn't convert on a 5-on-3. Yeah, the power play was divided, so they had 11 seconds of 5-on-3 time to start the second, but they really needed to convert on that. But it wasn't just yesterday either. Against the Pens, yes, the Sens scored on a 4-on-3 power play in overtime to win, 
but they had their chances 5 on 4 in regulation, but couldn't put the game away. Against the Habs on Thursday, they managed to score on their only opportunity, but against the Habs on Tuesday, they went 0 for 3. In three of the last four games, the Sens have failed to score on a 5 on 4 power play. You can't struggle so mightily to score goals at 5 on 4 and expect to win too many games. The penalty kill has gotten a little better lately. Now it's time for the power play to step up. Against the Habs, even though it was a 5-2 hockey game, the chances were there. They had the game's first power play, they had one not long into the second, and then their third one came after they went down 5-1. If they had it converted on either of the first two opportunities, the whole complexion of the game changes. They weren't able to do that against the Habs, or the Bruins, or the Penguins, and they lost two of three. The Sens need their power play to be better, because right now, 5-on-4, they can't score, and that is bad news. Next up, the Sens head out on a three-game road trip, kicking things off in Nashville on Tuesday night. The contest will be the first of two between the two teams this season, with the Preds coming in having dominated their recent head-to-head -head play. Coming into the contest, the Preds are 6-1-2 in their last nine, and 5-0-1 in their last six against the Senators. And so far this season, it's the Preds who have been by far the better team. While the Sens have compiled a record of 13-14-4 so far this season, the Preds come into that contest with a record of 9-10-1 to sit second in the Western Conference and first in the Central Division. Ottawa's daunting task against one of the NHL's top teams becomes even harder as they do so on the road where Ottawa's 3-9-1 record goes up against Nashville's 11-5 home record. Not a great situation to go into. The Preds also come into the contest as the more rested team, as they've been off since beating Calgary on Saturday, while the Sens had to play Boston last night and didn't travel until Nashville until today. Keep it simple and play smart. See ya Tuesday night.